but into a lot of depth in it as you as you know already but we want you to be able to put put a handle on this text so you can do some probing on your own now Paul is uh, spelling out as a delineate means to spell spell out showing the details the nature of spiritual life what spiritual life is like yeah. just like earthly life but it has to be maintained yeah. you have to get it first of all you, you didn't give yourself life Amen. in the flesh you didn't give you see it's a per perfect prayer it was given to you life was given to you Amen. spiritual life and then it has to be maintained yeah. and that's where the bottleneck has occurred that's where people have become confused. The maintenance, uh, they have, the thrust has been on getting life. That's been the thrust, see? And it's not that uh, getting life is wrong, it's just that that's not the main thing any more than starting a race is the main thing. Now Paul has summarized this matter in the, from the standpoint of what you received to maintain it. He summarized in the first chapter by saying that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now those blessings, that's the reservoir you've got to yes. work with to maintain spiritual life. When he says all spiritual blessings, he means everything that's required to initiate, maintain, and culminate spiritual life. Culminate in this world. Nothing is lacking. So if someone's lacking, it's not because there's no provision. That's right. Amen. If someone's not growing, it's, it's not because God hasn't made provision. Yes. It's that they haven't taken advantage of it. Or perhaps they don't know about it. That's possible too. Perhaps they don't know about it. Now at no point is there, at no point, is there dependence upon resources that have been developed by men. Yeah. Amen. We talk about redeemed, even redeemed men. Mm -hmm. Peter makes a precise statement about this, similar to Paul's, that we quoted from Ephesians 1, 3. He says, His divine power mm -hmm. had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I hear you, but there's a little catch here. <laughs> Through the knowledge of him that has called you into glory into glory and virtue. Mm -hmm. These are the same things Paul was talking about, all spiritual blessed in heavenly places, the same things. Mm -hmm. But here they're obtained through the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. That's something you have. That's right. mm -hmm. Knowledge of God isn't something God has. You would, God doesn't have, as we would say, knowledge. I mean, he knows all things. He's, you don't apply that word to, to God in the sense of this text at all. This knowledge is obtained through Christ himself. It's not something you go to school for. It's not something you read books about. Jesus is, is come to give us an understanding that we might know him. That's the knowledge. And that's the true God he's talking about. The point is, it's not an academic setting where you learn and you have knowledge. It's given to us. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so there's, and there's only one person that can give it to us, and that's Christ. That's right. Now, we're going to touch on this tonight, that when God gives you something, you have to do something with it. Amen. And if you don't, you'll be lost anyway. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> this is how it works now. Amen. I said, vital as Brother Isaac is pointing out that you know where it come from. Yes. But that ought to drive you to do something with it. Once you, once you know where it came from, uh -huh. then that compels you to do something with it. Now, Jesus is giving us this knowledge because no one really has, no one knows who the Father is. They don't, <laughs> no one is able to say, there's the Father. No one is able to know who the Father is. The Son's the only one who knows who he is and only, and and who he wants to reveal him to. That's right. Amen. If Jesus doesn't want to reveal God, he isn't going to be revealed. That's right. Now just to let you know that he's not uh, 
stingy about this. He, the next, that's Matthew eleven twenty seven. The next verse says, "Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and learn from me." So it's not that Jesus is reluctant to to teach these things. It's just a matter you have to you have to go to him for it. He doesn't come to you for it. Yes, amen. That's the difference. And when you come, you'll never be disappointed. Amen. He, Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I'll in no wise cast out. Just, just to clarify that that's the way it is. Can't really give it to safeguard. It's a proud away. That's right. The arrogant <laughs> Now Paul's going to approach this matter of maintaining spiritual life from a different perspective in our text. He's going to show that it depends on our response. He spelled out that salvation has some requirements that are to be fulfilled. In a brief summary, putting off the old man, putting on the new man, being renewed to the spirit of our mind. That's, that's something that it, it really is a requirement. Now, this is not a suggestion. This is not like a statement of the ideal circumstance. Do the best you can. No, this has got to be done. Now, the issue of how it can be done, and that's what we're going to deal with here. It seems to me that this has almost a hundred percent been missed by the modern church. It's not seen that having, having no part in the foundation of salvation is not the same as not having a role in salvation. Yeah. It's not seen that that's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. When he says that there's one foundation that he laid it, that doesn't mean you don't have a role in the salvation itself. You don't have a part in the foundation of it. But you do have a role in it, and it has to be played. Amen. That's what we're going to deal with here tonight. Now here's the text, Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh -huh. yeah. Here you have that word and again. <laughs> Which means it's a continuation. You in Christ Jesus have been brought into a lot of things that are not only going on, a lot of things that you've got to do at the same time. We've already mentioned some of the things. That simultaneously this has to be done. If you say, well I can't do it. Well, that's you. God's given you a nature that can do it. And faith is up to this. It can do it. Just a few of these things that you do simultaneously. Once again, you put off the old man. Be renewed the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man. Put away lying. Speak truth to your neighbor. Be angry without sinning. Don't give a place to the devil. Stop stealing. Work with your hands a thing that's good. Give to him that has need. Allow no corrupt communication out of your mouth. Use speech that ministers grace. And that's all got to be. <laughs> There's that. This isn't like one, two, three, four, five. This isn't like that. Yeah. This is not a sequence of things to be done. There are certain times when one of these, whoop, it'll probably you really got to put some attention to it. These all have to be done simultaneously. Now, if that seems hard, that's just the beginning. Yes. I'm going to show you here that if you're going to have to rely on God all the way, not only to get these things done, now we're going to touch on the fact that this work involves you cooperating and working with deity. Oh, now we're in another arena. Now we're in another arena. Because God doesn't walk with somebody who doesn't agree with him. Yeah. Amen. The Amen. same as 3.3. Three. Now we're in a complicated matter. If a person doesn't agree with God, he can't work with God. God won't let him work with him. God won't cooperate with him. God won't bless him. God won't hear him. Now that explains a lot of situations. Amen. That explains all backsliders. That explains people that aren't growing. That explains it. They aren't cooperating. They're holding back. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're not drawing. It doesn't make any difference what they say. They, we're not asking people to explain why they're spiritual, spiritually retarded. We're not asking for an explanation. We already got the explanation. We know what it is. See, you've got to work with God. You, 
Yeah. God's not going to let you sit on your duff while he does everything. Amen. That's not what salvation is designed to do. Salvation brings glory to God by showing that these infirm people who have sinned and come short of the glory of God and had no resources of themselves and couldn't do anything of themselves, all of a sudden they're workers together with God. Yes. Or laborers together with God. See, that's... Oh, that's quite a phenomenon. That's what brings God yes, glory. It doesn't bring God glory to lift a person out of the mud hole and keep jumping in it again. Yes, this doesn't bring any glory to God at all. Now, actually, Paul kind of spelled this out in Philippians how this works. You do it, but you're doing it with God. He says, uh, Am I beloved as you've always obeyed, well he couldn't write that to most of the people today. As ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. You, you work out, you work out your own salvation through and trembling, for it is God that worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. Where were you doing anything? Indeed you were. Somebody said, well it wasn't me. Well who was it then? If the thing was done through your body and you didn't do it, who did do it? You did it. Amen. But see, someone else cooperated with you. Either you did it through Satan's power or you did it through God's power. It's God that works in you. That's the mystery of God. To see, that's the mystery of it. Yes. The scripture says that we are his workmanship mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the glory of this, God could have, God could have imposed compliance. Mm -hmm. No, no question. He, yeah. He's able to do that. But see, this is the this is the glory of salvation that's Amen. greater than the glory of the law, Amen. and greater than just the the initial creation. Is that what he's doing in salvation? He is creating a, a new creature yeah. that that actually participates in his nature Amen. and has a desire Amen. unto God himself uh, uh, unto rejecting anything that would compete with that. See, that's the nature of the new creation. And our works are just an evidence of that workmanship. Amen. But it is it is us. I mm -hmm. what what you're what you're saying there, that's where people get off they they, they think that this <laughs> either it's God or it's me. No, it's what we've been made in Christ Jesus. That's right. And it's evidencing itself in the things that we do. Mm -hmm. That's the glory of the thing, see? That's the glory of it. Yes. Actually, these things that God has given us to do, we cannot do unless we're in fellowship with Him. That's, That's right. why you see a lot of these things not being done. That's right. That mm -hmm. salvation is calculated this way. This is this is how it's calculated. It's calculated so that the person can't do it without God, and God won't do it without their cooperation and involvement in it. Amen. Why? Because this is what brings glory to God. The fact that God can be seen in this in this lowly creation. The fact that God can be seen in that, that's what gives him glory. So what he does, he's alerting us to this circumstance so we can participate in it and be workers together with God, bringing glory to God. Brother Gibbon, that's quite such a reproach to see men doing things that we know don't belong right. to God. That's mm -hmm. right. I mean, by just the discipline of the flesh, they're able to live lives. Now, now, because of this arrangement of salvation, this nature of salvation, the work of God can be inhibited in the individual. Not because God's weak or God can't, or that it's not because it's because of the nature of salvation, the nature of it. Yeah. The person can inhibit the work of God. Man is brought into a, a alliance with Christ, the Holy Spirit, and with God in redemption. But it's done through their personal faith. And it's done by grace. 
And both of those require that the individual be alert to the circumstance and involved in it. It's just it's just it's just how it's arranged. It's complicated by the fact that the remnants of the old nature remain in our bodies. They're in See, that's what, that's what complicates the thing. But this is the thing that brings God glory, that he takes this new creation and empowers it to subdue the enemy that's within him. <laughs> Amen. And this brings God glory, see? This is a prelude of what's to come. He doesn't ask you to conquer the world. He's going to give you the world. He's going to give you the earth. He's just going to give that to you, gratis. He doesn't ask you to conquer the world. He doesn't ask you to change your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know we have this desire to do this. There's nothing wrong with it. But the, some of us have had a pretty hard time doing it, haven't we? Amen. That's because that's not our commission. Yes. Do the best you can. Don't, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean you don't make an effort in this area. Yes. What we're saying is what you've been charged with is work out your salvation of fear and trembling. You, you put off your... See, a lot of people are trying to put off the other guy's old man. That's right. That's true. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard, isn't it? Maybe you had a try at it. Most of us had a try at it. Putting off the old man and the other person. Just, we couldn't do it. Why? Because that's not the way salvation is designed. Salvation is designed to put off your old man. Now God will enable you to do it. But not while your fist is clenched. That's right. yep. Not while your head is turned. Not while you're focused on the things of the world. It won't happen under those circumstances, Sister Barb. Now, shadow or a picture of this in the time of the law because the the weakness of that time was that men were weak through the flesh. Through the flesh. Mm -hmm. And the end that was the end of the story at that time because their hearts were far from God. Mm -hmm. They couldn't overcome that situation. They That's couldn't right. overcome the flesh to have what we have now in the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So to revert back to a system of law, that'd be foolish and disastrous. Amen. Now see this situation, this old this old man, the flesh that we still have living in the house, this is what has complicated matters so that God cannot deal directly with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's got to go through the one mediator. Amen. Between God and man. And then Jesus has got to do it through grace. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit's got to enter in. See, all those modifiers are because of this yes. condition that we're in. Mm -hmm. So a person says, God told me. You better make sure God told you. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you right now, you better make sure when you make a statement like that, God told you. Because this is a red flag to me. Because God always goes through Christ. Christ always goes through the Spirit and always by faith, through grace. <laughs> That's because our situation necessitates that kind of approach. Yeah. So down here at the bottom end, that's associated with faith. Mm -hmm. If it's weak at that point, it affects everything from there back to God. Because yeah. God works through Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ works through the Spirit by grace and through faith. So now we're down to the through faith area. This exhortation has to do with at the through faith level, see? Amen. That if you are if you won't open the door, Jesus won't come in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that what he said to the church at Laodicea? Is that what he said? Yeah. Behold I stand at the door and knock. It was a church. He's knocking at the church. He still is. He's still knocking at the church. If any man, not if the whole congregation, if any man will hear my voice and open the door, it appears as though it has a handle on the inside only, this particular door, I will come in. It'd be, be no question about what he'll present. I'll sup with him and he with me. That is you. This matter will be resolved. But I'm not going to knock the door down. 
Why? Because he can't? Oh, no. He could knock the door down, but that wouldn't save you. Yeah, that's right. yeah. That wouldn't save you. God doesn't knock the door down to save you. Just to, if he does knock the door down, it's just to get your attention like he did Saul of Tarsus. Mm -hmm. But it come a point in time, Saul of Tarsus had to do something. Mm -hmm. yeah. but there's a wisdom in salvation that is hidden to the, to the eyes of men. Or, um, whenever you're talking about knocking this door down and not, God doesn't do it because he's operating according to a, a wisdom. That's right. Amen. That th th this appeal is not a request that men should should recognize him. God could create another completely different creation if it was just a matter of God wanting to be recognized. Yeah. But he's doing a work. He is actually yeah. overcoming and uh, just running roughshod off uh, over every assault that Satan has has cast at him, and he's he's addressing that also in salvation. Yeah, amen. He's he is he is drawing us. Again, this is a higher wisdom than what we're able to see. We see the evidences of it. Yeah. We don't see everything that's behind the scenes. But this is a wonderful thing. This new creation is is a very high creation. It's one thing to be a man according to the flesh. It's another to be a new creature mm -hmm. yeah. created Amen. in Christ Jesus. This is a high calling. Amen. And this creature has privileges that the flesh can't even dream about. Yeah. Yeah. And God is going to be glorified more than what we can perceive on this side of the grave. Amen. Amen. I mean, this is the, the day of judgment is going to be a, a really glorious time for us who have believed and for God Himself preeminently. But this this standing on the door and knocking is an appeal to an honest and a good heart. That's right. And and this desire for life and recognizing that life is in God. Amen. And wanting it. God is mm -hmm. not glorified by making making somebody kicking and screaming mm -hmm. come to him anyway. Uh -huh. But rather somebody that, that recognizes that he is the life. Mm -hmm. He is the light. He is the Lord God of everything. And, and wanting him more than anything else. Amen. Now, Amen. Now here's here's how it works. That once a person is in the loop, so to speak, he can trace all of the ability back to God. Yes, that's right. He'll oh, it is not I that did. See, he'll be able, but he did it. Uh -huh. But he was enabled to do it. See, that's the difference. He was enabled to do it. And now we're talking tonight about something that will stop the enablement. Yes, that's right. And it is very important to see. And grieve not. The Holy Spirit of God. Grieve not. Some other versions say don't make sour, sorrowful. Say, can God be grieved? Can God be made sorry? Oh, yeah. You remember in Noah's day? Yeah. God saw the violence in the earth and what it says? It says it grieved. Yeah. Uh -huh. It grieved God. Nothing good comes when God's grieved. Let me tell you right now. Yeah. When yeah. God's grieved... <clears throat> It's not the door to a blessing. Yeah, that's right. Amen. He destroyed the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was grieved by the condition. Mm -hmm. See, God has affections. He has a heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's more than just a mind. Mm -hmm. He's impacted by what he sees, whether it's a humble and contrite spirit that touches him. Mm -hmm. If it's a hardness of heart, that, that affects him. And salvation is calculated to allow for these affectations mm -hmm. in God. So he tells us what uh, a humble and a contrite spirit. Now God has a mm -hmm. he has a certain attitude toward that. Yes. And that's why you intend to be an encouragement mm -hmm. to seek that kind of heart and develop. Once you have it, maintain it. You have to maintain a sensitive heart. Yeah. You could be sensitive now and in a couple of moments be dull. Yes, that's right. Because your attention is drawn away by something. Grieved. And you remember it says of Israel that they grieved. I was grieved by this generation. 
And I swore they'll not enter my rest. See, that's what happened. Another time Jesus was in the synagogue. He looked round about on the people and he was grieved what he saw. The people grieved him. So now we'll learn that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. And we are admonished, don't let this happen. Yes, don't let the Holy Spirit be grieved by you. Don't. He, be, you may not live a day until somebody will try and get you to do something that in your heart you know would grieve the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But they'll, they'll press you to do it. Mm -hmm. It's what the old tempter, that's what he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Trying to get you on the bad side of God, so to speak. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. Now notice how he states this. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. See how he says it? The Holy Spirit yeah. of God. The Holy Spirit of God means the Holy Spirit that came from God. It's, it's like that. It, it's his. It's his spirit, but it came. It came from him. He originated it. It is written that God has given us the earnest of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And 1 Thessalonians says, God has given us of His Holy Spirit. See, so that's talking about the origin of where we got the gift, the origin, the Holy Spirit of God. In Scripture, the Spirit is identified as holy 96 times. Only three of those are in the prophets. Three mentions, and all from Genesis to Revelation. It's interesting, isn't it? The 26 references to the Holy Spirit in the Gospels, nine of them in John, eight in Acts, 75 in the Epistles, this is to the Spirit. Forty-one times the Holy Spirit is mentioned in Acts, which is a record of the activities of the early yeah, church. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So it's mentioned 26 times. Amen. Mm -hmm. My spirit is found in Genesis through Revelation only three times. My spirit. <laughs> uh, 13 times. Three times in Matthew and once in Revelation. My spirit. You say, why was it mentioned more? Because in salvation, Christ is the, yeah. is the means, see? Yeah. Christ is the means. The point of mention is to confirm that the day of sin, the day of salvation, the Holy Spirit is more active and more prominent than he ever was before. Amen. That's the point you want to see. <clears throat> Much is made of him being given to us and things that are authored by him, so to speak. Let me mention some of them. Born of the Spirit, newness of the Spirit, law of the Spirit of life, things of the Spirit, first fruits of the Spirit, mind of the Spirit, power of the Spirit, love of the Spirit, manifestation of the Spirit, ministration of the Spirit, promise of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, unity of the Spirit, sword of the Spirit, supply of the Spirit, fellowship of the Spirit, sanctification of the Spirit. And on top of that, there's the gift of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Holy Spirit, renewing of the Holy Spirit, partakers of the Holy Spirit, quench not the Spirit. Why? Because if you do, you don't get any of those. Amen. That's why you quench not the Spirit. He's like the one between Jesus and you. And Jesus is between you and God. And you make sure nothing interrupts this. Yes. So that the spirit to Jesus to God so that nothing interrupts that. Or if you want to look at it from what happened and you by grace through faith that that, not, that not line's not ruptured someplace. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that all of a sudden you're not believing. You're not trusting. Uh -huh. You're not leaning on the Lord. Uh -huh. You're not depending on the Lord. Now what does that mean? No grace. Yeah. You get no grace. That's right. Amen. Yeah. I know we pray a lot. We pray for a lot of people, and I don't know whether it's going to, anything's going to happen or not. And I don't see really any precedent for it. I'm not thinking of anyone particular this time. I understand, but when we pray for God, God to bless somebody, we want to make sure that they do in fact qualify for the blessing. Uh -huh. That they're living by grace through faith. And if they aren't, we're going to pray for conviction. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to pray for waking up. 
That's the kind of thing we're going to pray for. Yeah. We're not going to pray give them a new heart. God doesn't give a new heart to someone who hasn't repented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not going to give a new heart to someone who hasn't come to him. That's what you get after you come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so when you pray for someone that's wallowing in the hog pen, there's some kind of drastic action has to be taken because the way salvation is set up God sends it through Christ, by the Spirit, through grace, by faith. If the person down here doesn't have that faith, <laughs> nothing's going to come down. A benefit. When you said uh, wallowing in the hog pen, I also thought of, I've met some people before that they may not look like they're wallowing in the hog pen, but they have no... Yeah. desire for God or no yeah. actually they don't think that they need God that's right uh, they may live uh, lives that look like they're yeah. they're doing well but uh, when you talk to them they don't show that they even think that they need God yeah. you have to know that you need God yeah that, well I would call that wallowing in a hog pit. well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I just, know what you meant yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. See, the fact that the Spirit comes from God demands you to be holy because God's holy. So anything, come, anything coming from a holy God has got to be holy itself, but particularly the Holy Spirit is holy. Yeah. In fact, God is thrice holy. Yeah. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. That's what they shouted out in Revelation there. Nothing unholy can possibly come from Him. Amen. The work of the Spirit performs is a holy work. Yeah. Amen. Now these days, of course, we don't hear much about holy today. That's and when I was young, the uh, church that I was affiliated with, they didn't talk much about holy either. They you had to be like a Pentecostal or somebody like that for you to. Oh, I'm serious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. The churches I was associated with, they didn't talk about holiness or being holy. It just was. It just wasn't talked about. That was some of the more radical groups. But the word holy is mentioned 611 times in Scripture. So it's an important word. In other words, you, if you're a Bible reader, you can't miss it. You, you can't miss it. It's in there enough. You may be a Bible reader and, and read over that Jesus, the Messiah, is going to be born in Bethlehem. That was only mentioned once. You may read over ye are gods. That was only mentioned once. But you won't read over and not see holy because it's all over the place. Holy, pure. You know, even the demons. Jesus is the Holy One. Mm -hmm. yeah. His holiness compacted into a single person yeah. that was visible, mm -hmm. that was manifested. God was manifested in the flesh. He's, and even the demons knew he was holy. Mm -hmm. One occasion they cried out, What have we? Let us alone! Well, you know, I'd love to hear some sinners cry that out. Leave us alone! Say, we don't aim to leave you alone. Yeah. Leave us alone! We know thee who thou art. He said, but thou come to destroy us? We know who thou, the, who thou art, the Holy One. <laughs> that's how holiness repels yeah, right. yeah. they come together it's like the magnet that pushes apart you know yeah. <laughs> yes. I guess that's a better example of what I was talking about is when he was around the Pharisees and, yeah. and Sadducees they, they, he's the holy one yeah, and they didn't even recognize it he said you're whitewashed too that's See, right. that word, they, look like they didn't know it they yeah. looked like they are holy but they were that's right. <laughs> now the people are admonished now this is serious. Now God's serious when he says this. This isn't is like something casual. He says, but as he which has called you is holy, yeah. so be ye holy in all manner Amen. of conversation. That's kinds of life. Because it is written, be ye holy. I am holy. For I am holy. So some people are holy in the assembly, but they're unholy on the job. Uh -huh. yeah. They're unholy. <laughs> They're unholy when they shop. They're unholy. In all your conversation. Yes, Some people are unholy in the neighbors they prefer. They're, they're unholy in their visitations to friends. They're unholy. Yeah. Be holy in all manner of conversation. 
God has not freed you to be someplace that he doesn't, he isn't. Amen. You may feel obligated to be there, but think it out, think it out, yes. think it out. Yeah. God hasn't obligated you to be someplace where he isn't. Yes. Now we understand that in, just in the normalities of life that this happens. We understand that. We're talking now about the choices that a person makes. There's no question about the necessity of a holy life. Now the issue here is how it is to be achieved. That's the issue in our text here. Paul said enough about the Spirit in his letter, in this letter to the Ephesians. He said enough about the Holy Spirit that we get the idea he has something to do with all of this, these requirements that are, that are meant. So he says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. I mean, if you're going to do these things that I'm telling you have to be done, in summation is put off the old, put on the new. In summation is be holy in all manner of conversation. Now, if you're going to get this done, you can't grieve the Spirit. Because this is not just like a human achievement. Yeah. This is something the Holy Spirit's got to enable you to do, but now he's pretty sensitive about who he works with. Amen. He really is. Mm -hmm. You suppose you've done some things that have disappointed the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you've done something that distressed? Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe the Holy Spirit had some precious gem to give you and you got dawdled off here someplace else and got out of the path? You think, you think that didn't affect the Holy Spirit? Yeah. When he wanted to be in the kitchen, did you send him down to the basement? When he wanted to be working with you, did you set him in a rocking chair in the back room someplace? Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve him. He's sensitive. Any older you get, as I can testify to you, you can become more and more sensitive to this. So things that I wouldn't, I wouldn't share with everybody because they would seem too minuscule. They'd seem too little but to me they're not little and I, I could sense Holy Spirit said get get away from that now all right that, that's enough there you spent you spent long enough there you have to have a sensitive spirit and there's no there's no like special code or something that you can give people but when you walk in the spirit he's in the spirit you'll develop a sensitivity if you just listen mm -hmm. if you listen to your heart more than to your head Sometimes I've, I've had to tell people, follow your heart, not your head. Do it. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart, not your head. Yeah. Dwells in your heart, not your mind. Mm -hmm. Don't grieve Him. Don't disappoint Him. If He wants to take you to Jerusalem, don't settle for going down to Jericho. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Huh? He said he sends you to Canaan, don't, don't settle for going down to Egypt. Amen. If he wants you to labor in the kingdom of God, don't consent to labor mm -hmm. fundamentally in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he's God too, you know, he's called God in Acts 5.3. And he's an eternal spirit, so his character doesn't change. Any, anything that's eternal is un, unchangeable. Right? So he's unchangeable, the Holy Spirit. So if you do something that is wrong, he has this standard grief. Yeah. It's called grief. You know, when Israel grieved God, they forfeited the promised land. So they grieved him, and he swore in his wrath, they'll not enter my rest. You don't want that to happen. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Under the day of redemption. Yeah. Now other versions, they, they really botch this up. <laughs> I tell you. I'm very concerned about this multiplicity of translations and the freedom people take in using them and translating them. Well, it's not translations, actually. Other versions say the day of salvation. Or that's, that's not bad. The day you'll be set free from the world of sin. That is terrible. The day we shall be set free. That's terrible. 
The day when salvation from sin will be complete, that has a hint of truth. The day of freedom is terrible. Day of release by ransom, terrible. Someday you'll be free from your sins, that's extra terrible. The day that makes us free, that's not proper. Your eventual full redemption, all right, that, that, that makes a statement. And a final deliverance through Christ from evil and con from the evil from evil and the consequences of sin. That's not proper. See, the word redeem means the releasing a release and affected by a payment of ransom. Now, as you see, some of the versions say you'll be you'll be free. See, that's not right. Your freedom from the law of sin and death occurs when you die. That's right. I mean, why didn't these boneheads see that? People that are absent from the body are present with the Lord. They're free yeah. from sin at that point. Uh -huh. He's not talking about being free. Uh -huh. We'll not have realized the totality of salvation, you understand. And the ransom isn't going to be paid then. What a terrible translation the ransom has already been paid the spirit soul and body have already been bought so what's he talking about he's talking about the resurrection of the body it's called in Romans 8 23 the redemption of the body that's what he's talking about the Holy Spirit is your stamp of approval you belong to God until you get this new body. Because the only thing that casts a shadow of doubt uh -huh, yeah. on your ownership is this body. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But he's, he's redeemed the body. Amen. This seal, mm -hmm. the presence of the Holy Spirit proves you're of God. Yes, that's right. Who does it prove it to? I want to take a little moment here to comment on that. Say, well, to us, well, you really you don't have any real satisfactory proof other than his fruit. But think of it this way. Think of the holy angels that are ministering spirits to those who shall be the heirs of salvation. How do they know who they are? Well, the seal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> the seal, that's how they know who they are. That's right. How does heaven know who you are? The seal. That's how they know. Now, if you are able to recognize the work of the Holy Spirit, then you can, you can have this assurance too. But the, it seems to me that the mark, the mark or the seal, is more for the people that are going to yeah. harvest every yeah. harvest, <laughs> reap a harvest of the fields, or are ministering. Mm -hmm. It's like the mark. Remember, they, yeah. there was a mark put on people that were. Yeah. Sighing and crying because of the abomination of Jerusalem. Amen. When they went through to destroy, they looked for the mark. The mark. Mm -hmm. Well, we get we could get really pretty personal about this. Let's say that a tornado is blowing through Joplin, and God has uh, sent out a decree that yeah. so, such and such are to be spared. The angels are sent forth, and what do they do? They look for the mark. Yeah. <laughs> they look for the seal. That's how they go by. But what if a person is grieved? Does he still have the seal? I don't think so. Does the Holy Spirit leave him? I don't know. But the seal, the seal isn't an indelible mark that no matter what you do, it just stays with you. The seal is associated with faith, grace, the Holy Spirit, Christ. See, it all, it all is associated with that chain of persons that's, and things that stand between you and God. That's the seal. The seal is the Holy Spirit. God leaves where he's not wanted. Do you think the Holy Spirit stays where he's not wanted? When God is grieved with Israel, he said they're not going to enter in. Does the Holy Spirit react differently? No. When he's grieved, he says, well, poor fellow, I'll just, I'll wait a little longer, maybe. Well, I can't make a final pronouncement on this, but I can only say, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. You do not want 
yep. the Holy Spirit to be made sorrowful because of you. Amen. If it has to be renewed, something happened. That's it? right. Brother Gibbon. Yes. I was just considering this language of sealing, that it involves the idea of being impressionable. Something mm -hmm. that's moldable so that an that's image good. can be left that's good. with yep. that seal. So it's reasonable to think on the other hand of something that's hardened. Good. You can't mm -hmm. leave an impression there. Amen. Amen. Good good thinking. Amen. Well, how do you agree the Holy Spirit in a nutshell is by allowing an evil heart of unbelief to enter in? Yes, that's right. Yes, that's that's the kind of the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Allow the evil heart of unbelief to enter in. And the Holy Spirit doesn't uh, he doesn't work under those conditions. Amen. Now, as I have said, that those who have some uh, the full assurance of faith and so forth, they'll be able to trace this back all the way to God. They'll be able to trace it. It's not I, but the grace of God that worked in me. Seen. The Spirit enabled me. It was grace that did it. Oh, Holy Spirit brought this. Jesus Christ mediated this. He is all. You'll be able to trace it right yeah, back amen. to God. Yeah. But He says these things. So if you ever get in a situation where you can't trace it back to God, uh -huh. it's like a siren going off. Yes. Get to work on this. You've got to know God. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of God. Yes. See? I think I'll close there. Yeah. Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? <coughs> Brother Ricky. What you said about those little things you talked about. Yeah. Because uh, that's why it's so critical not to compare yourselves with mm -hmm. others. That's why that's so unwise. Mm -hmm. Because a brother may not have any kind of weakness mm -hmm. in this certain area. We're talking about lawful yeah, things. We're mm -hmm. talking yeah. about mm -hmm. immoral type things. Mm -hmm. He may not have a weakness in that area, so there's no yeah. distraction in it or whatever. But maybe you do. Yeah, so that's you right. prepare yourself with them and you decide to give yourself to this, although you sense yeah. in yourself that you shouldn't. And then that's when you start going downhill. Amen. So, yep. I understand what you're talking about, those little things, because as you grow, that's right. the, 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 the scrutiny of the Spirit about what you give yourself to becomes a lot finer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And it encourages ourselves to be more focused and mm -hmm. to be more sensitive amen. toward mm -hmm. the Lord. And amen. so I'm... I'm real thankful for the Spirit in that regard. Oh, amen. Amen. Well, he, he's even given us a special advantage. He tells the believers, now, if you know that brother so-and-so, says so-and-so is weak in this area, but you're not, don't flaunt your freedom. Yeah. See, that's like an extra, extra protection, yeah. see? Don't flaunt that. Just do, do it, do it when you're by yourself alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah. yes. Yeah, there was a sense in which um, I don't know if I say it limited, but m men were limited in how much they could receive until the Holy Spirit was given. Yeah. It says, says that um, he was he uh, because he reasoned. I said because the Holy Spirit had not yet been given, because Christ had not yet been, been glorified. glorified. So see, this right. sin had to be removed. Christ had to be exalted at, at, the, at the right hand of God before this outpouring of the Spirit would be would be um, effective or or beneficial to men. That's right. It, 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 he, they had to actually be able to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and they couldn't do that with sin. So the, the question becomes is when a person gives in the sin then and becomes a candidate for repentance, is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it would seem to me, has to do the first work again, has to reprove, has to Rebuke, convict them yes, of sin, yeah. rebuke them. That, this is, I mean, it yeah, isn't, isn't like the Holy Spirit again. is disinterested. The law, he, the law has to bring them to Jesus right. again. Amen. 
So see, this is this, this yes, first yes. work of the Spirit yeah. was limited. Is my point yeah. is that He couldn't give you the, the the full benefits of salvation while you were in in an unrepentant state. That's right. So He would He would be motivated to lead you to repent. Yeah. But see, to do this after you've come into the kingdom, see, this is a. Yeah. See, it, it says that they of Israel they limited. Yes, that's right. The yeah. Holy One of Israel, yeah. not not his person was it limited what they got from yeah, him was limited yeah, I like the way you developed this our, the need mm -hmm. that uh, all the provisions all these things that God uh, that mm -hmm. we need to do mm -hmm. it comes to God as they're provided That's right. to us uh, by God through, the, yeah. through Jesus through the Lord through the Holy Spirit <laughs> and now with that grieving mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit now that just shows you how critical That's it right. is that we don't grieve the Spirit Amen. Mm -hmm. if we're going to continue to be able to, to put off the old man yeah. and put on the new Amen. And these type of things mm -hmm. See, if God could have saved rebellious people Israel would have been saved yeah, that's right yeah. Yes, Judah. I'm thinking about what you said early in the lesson. You said salvation is crafted to where we have to have God's help, and God will help without your cooperation. <clears throat> thought of two gears meshing together. Mm -hmm. The gear isn't going to work properly if the teeth on one gear are missing. The both gears are interdependent. They won't work one without the other. And there's no bartering. That's, that's not a good word for it. But if you do this for me, God, then I will live the rest of my life for you. There, there's none of that. So our we have to depend on God to, we, we can, to give us the resources to be able to be cooperative with Him. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can see, Gadget, that salvation works this way. You have to first, you have to want it before you get it. And then the law, will move, if you take it seriously, will move you to, yes. <laughs> to want it. Yes? A person that doesn't see uh, the truth of, of the Holy Spirit being vexed or grieved or quenched, really doesn't understand the holiness of God. That's right. Amen. They, uh, that's right. There's a representation of God that's presently being uh, given to people that that God is just, just waiting for us to give any kind of attention to Him at all. If we'll just whatever we give Him, He'll accept mm -hmm. uh, and be glad for it. Just eager for us to, to come to Him. I've actually heard people say God will do anything yeah. to have you come to Him. Yeah. Well, they don't understand true holiness then because God is obnoxious by sin. Yeah. Do, do and, make, and this is one of the reasons. And the fact that we can be obnoxious by things. There are things when you're walking close to God that are an offense to you. That's right. You, you'll get away from it. You'll avoid it. You'll reprove it. You'll do whatever is in your power to, to shut it down. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. And, and that's because we're made in the image of God. We're seeing, we're actually <coughs> seeing a, kind of a, a small picture of the intensity of God's hatred towards sin. Amen. Oh. People, people that represent God as eager for man's praise, this sort of, they forget that he's surrounded by an innumerable company of hosts that are praising him all the time. That vastly outnumber the inhabitants of the earth. So this can't be, this can't be what drives God. What drives God is when what he does is perceived. Yet in people that is not of themselves couldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. That's what brings glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You made the statement before. God is not going to drag you to heaven if you don't want to be there. Yeah. Or he's not. The angel is not going to be pushing you towards <laughs> the pearly gates and you resisting because what you just said. That brings no glory to That's God. That's right. A changed nature from sin and ungodliness and seeing their condition and seeing the remedy for it brings glory to God. Now, now if, 
if that position was true, that he'd drag you in, wouldn't that more or less obligate God to save everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if he didn't, then you'd have, then he'd be electing, oh. and that that's offensive to people. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I just recently heard someone talking about how God loves us unconditionally, and then he was trying to talk about how we are to be holy, but he by the time he got done, he was it was just so confusing. <laughs> this unconditional love thing that that yeah. is moving through the churches and people have grabbed a hold of. It just confuses everything. When yeah. you start to read the scriptures, it doesn't make a sense at all. I, I think, Brother Jeremy, that the world is now, the church world is now accustomed to this so that nobody questions it. But they don't see this side of God, that God, there are things that stir up God's wrath, and this like has totally been obscured. Yeah, amen. Is part of the corrupting speech we were talking about last week. Is yeah. That's yeah. Right. Amen. The aspect of this corrupting That's speech. right. Amen. It does a deadly work. Yeah. yeah. It's right. not in scripture. That's not right. Well, this guy I was I'm talking about, he he saw that we need to be holy. And he but then he was trying to wind twist yeah. this unconditional and he he just I doesn't don't think fit, he figured it out. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. fit. It doesn't All right, well, yes, Mr. Maddie. Barb has spoken of the seal needing to be soft and pliable so that it can take the imprint. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way for the wax that you use as a seal to remain soft is for it to remain in contact with a heat source. That's right. In the fire. That's right. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is is the fire That's that keeps right. us soft. Spirit of burning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the nature of salvation. We thank You, Father, that You have arranged a way so that You can work in us to will and do of Your own good pleasure. We find great delight in this. We consent to it. And we ask for grace to never lose sight of this marvelous work that you do in those that are of a humble and contrite spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.